Mango, 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 to the kiwi. Mango, 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 The British Lung Foundation tell us that one in five people are diagnosed with a chronic lung condition. That equates to about 12 and a half million people across the entire United Kingdom. How's your breathing feel? Okay. Well, I'm a bit breathless today, but apart from that, yes, everything's all right. Okay, good. My condition is COPD. It's where the lungs uh, don't uh, get rid of the uh, bad air and it just won't let you breathe then. It stops the good air getting in there. The problems that people have are, are breathlessness, cough, uh, coughing up sputum, um, and a, a, a sort of they find it difficult to get on with day-to-day -day activities because they get out of breath, so they can't walk as far. People become socially isolated. Um, they, because they're not moving around so much, they get uh, muscle weakness and are sort of deconditioned. I do go out walking around the park or somewhere like that, which of course is, was my main hobby before this happened. And my other love was gardening, which unfortunately I can't do any longer. But I can still do something, I do what I can. I'm here to write a piece of music with you all and we're going to have a conversation that I'll record as the first bit of that process and then I'll go away and come up with some music ideas and come back and share them with you in February. Um, and I might end up using some clips from that conversation in the final piece, but we'll see how it goes. We started singing for breathing in 2007 um, and it wasn't actually my idea, it was uh, the idea of a colleague at the time, Lucy Underhill, who both of us are singer-songwriters. Um, and she, I think, saw a pulmonary rehab class happening and realised that there was an obvious connection between the exercises that people were being given for pulmonary rehab and the kinds of exercises we'd be given as singers. But I wanted to start by finding out how long you've all been coming to the club. So maybe, if you don't mind, we could just go around the room and you could tell me your name and roughly how long you've been coming. It doesn't have to be exact. We aimed the initial programme at people with COPD primarily, I think. But really it was intended as a, as a response to any condition that was causing breathlessness or complications around breathing or a difficult relationship with the breath. That would be in coming, I don't, I, it's over five years, but I can't really remember exactly. Mm -hmm. Coming between five and six yeah. years. Gosh. I have been coming longer than anybody else. Yes. 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 I would say about yeah. ten years. Ten years yeah. Yeah. Yes. So ten years plus probably. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd never belonged any um, activity involving singing. I'm not a singer. Um, I can't sing to save my life. But that's not the object of this class. The object of this class is to aid your breathing. And anything that helps you in this condition with breathing is worthwhile. But anyway, thank you. That's, that just, just give me something to start with. Yeah. Thank you very much Brilliant. for being thank in the discussion. Also. And thank I'll be you. back in February. And Think of releasing those abdominals, yeah? You've wobbled them all out, they're nice and relaxed. Just release them, okay? So here, one, two, three, four. So one of the key things that's happened over the last 10 years since we've set up Singing for Breathing is that the British Lung Foundation has really embraced the idea and the value of singing for supporting people with lung diseases. Um, so what we've seen is a focus on training up additional um, singing for lung health leaders across the country. There are now over 70 singing for lung health groups that are meeting weekly to support more older adults. The way I structure sessions, uh, I normally have about half an hour of warm-ups. Every week I go over the breath techniques that I use for singing with them. So even if there's new members, they can jump on board. Ah, yeah! Ah, yeah! All right! All right! Okay, yeah! Okay, yeah! Very nice, give me a woo! Woo! 
Give me a ho. Very nice. Right, let's sing. A suitable tune, in my opinion, would be well known by the participants, so they're going to enjoy singing it. It will have a mixture of long phrases and medium phrases with enough gaps in between so that I can encourage them to take a better breath before each phrase. My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. So bring back my body to me. Sing for breathing, it's all about the out-breath. That's why singing is amazing. People with lung disease often uh, sort of catastrophize about breathlessness. They, they get out of breath and it's very frightening and they think something terrible is going to happen. Um, and that makes them, if you like, phobic about breathlessness. Um, so one of the things that, that, that happens by, you know, gaining a sort of control over breathing is, is, is learning sort of skills to bring your breathing under control. If you've if you have emphysema and you start breathing, get, get anxious and you breathe very rapidly, what, what happens is you kind of, you end up stacking up breaths and become very, very breathless and getting your breathing back down again involves slowing your breathing down and controlling it. And some people kind of use skills that they've learned in, in singing to kind of sustain a slower breath out to help them to empty their lungs down to a sort of more comfortable level to be breathing at. You can see it, lovely. The results and the effects for me were immediate because I arrived at my very first singing for breathing session with my lungs feeling so tight that, as I said, I could barely breathe. And I walked out of the very first session with my lungs feeling nice and relaxed and open. And from that day to this, from that very first moment, I have never used my blue inhaler since that up to that point I was using 15 to 20 times a day. I've never felt the need to use it since that very first session. So after we met, I then went and met the people at the Brompton and the people in Uxbridge and spoke to some of the singing teachers who used to work doing this work before Elise and Ed. Um, and I've, so I've listened to all of those conversations again and I've tried to think about uh, making a piece of music that's going to cover lots of different so today I met the choirs again for the second time and we went through some tunes that I've been drafting so we tried a couple of rounds so they've been written so they're quite simple to sing but that the harmonies come out of the round rather than having to learn lots of multi-part harmony. I words were all based on things that people had said in the previous sessions. It needs to feel like the music is owned by the people who are singing it and I want them to want to sing these things after this project is over. I'll go back and do a bit more work on them now that I've heard people actually singing them and then come back in a few weeks. There's an element of group singing that is protective. It, it's the thing that, that supports people the most. So yes, you can sing by yourself and you will experience benefits from regular singing by yourself, but there's a pleasure and joy and a sociability around group singing that is what we are also promoting as part of Singing for Breathing. I don't like going to the gym, because you're on your own, it's all this same old thing over and over again, it's the sameness. I was coming to class, we're doing different songs all the time. I just love the company of it all. My main job is to make them have a good time, to help themselves almost without realising that they're helping themselves. I mean, nothing's funnier than sticking out your tongue and everybody's doing it. And you look around and there's red tongues, white tongues, blue tongues, you just, it's funny, it's funny. So it's a mixture of chronic bronchitis and emphysema where the lung tissue itself is damaged, sometimes damaged the blood. Everything regarding well. their respiratory condition is quite clinical and a lot of the time quite negative. Um, so they might be told that things are getting worse. 
But in singing for breathing sessions, there's actually a lot of praise. They're very likely to get better at what they're doing in the session. Music pulls us, it draws us, the rhythm, the pulse, the melody, the harmony, the being in sync with other people. And that is who we are behind the label of having a condition or a disease. It lifts you up. I mean, you can be really down and it, it just lifts you, you know, it's, it's good. So from the top, we're all in unison to sing all together. After three. One, two, the Singing Hospital was commissioned as a way to mark and celebrate the 10th anniversary of Singing for Breathing. It's very much an opportunity for us to um, advocate for the role of singing in promoting lung health, but also to celebrate the achievements of all the participants who've taken part in Singing for Breathing over the years. It felt really great hearing them perform the pieces after a bit of a break because they have settled, the songs have settled a lot and it feels like they belong much more to their groups than they did before. So yeah, really encouraging. That, and then that's the end of the whole piece, basically. That's how it's going to finish. So that, that's when we get a standing ovation. That's when you get a standing ovation. <laughs> and then at that point, when you get your standing ovation, Sharon comes forward and goes, move out my way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm a bit of a diva, so I do like performing. So I'm very much looking forward to the performance. And the last thing, again, it just needs a strong... We're here, we're bold as brass, so keep it strong, keep it in everyone's faces, because it's unaffected. So up you stand. Um, you basically just repeat it twice, all right? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Don't bring us down with your rag bag therapies. We come here for fun. On this journey of their breath improving and their confidence improving, it's important for other people to see that and it's important for the participants to feel proud of themselves. They always make a better sound than I expect them to make. Um, it's beautiful to see them, but they're a choir in the end. It wasn't set up as a choir, it was set up as a singing for lung health group, but they could go out and perform places and no one would know that they're a group with respiratory conditions. It feels amazing to see the work performed for an audience. It is, uh, the, but what's really amazing actually is having the three choirs come together, and that was what gave it real energy. I think all this work that we'd made together coming alive with that really big group. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The most touching bit for me was the moment when the people stood there with their feet rooted quiet, grounded, chest open, confident, because when you're breathless, none of those things happen. And it was those quiet moments with the breath, the low breath, I just had tears coming down my face. I think both 
the stream of people who can use it, which is the medical professionals, and the stream of people who finance it, which is the administrators, should both have taken away a message from this that it's worth backing, it's worth promoting, and it's worth promulgating. Oh, the love we conjure. I think everyone in the room wants to help themselves. That's why they come together so quickly and, and so easily, because they all want to help themselves, and by that, actually, they want to help each other as well. Is a thing of wonder. Singing for breathing has literally changed my life and changed my life for the better. With our hearts to the sky, we all defy you to determine us. in our groups every Tuesday, you will see somebody come in and she's, or he is wheeling, wheeling oxygen and he's clearly miserable and they're all uncomfortable and they're accompanied by a nurse and they're not quite sure they're going to enjoy this. And they sit over there in their corner and they gradually edge forward and they begin to stand up and they begin to sing. And by the end they're singing, singing like nightingales. So you see it doing good to other people as well as feel this is doing good to yourself. Coming to Singing for Breathing has transformed the way I manage my lung condition, the way I see my lung condition, and not feeling alone with the illness and making friends and not feeling that I have to explain my illness because I was among people who understood. I'm more so even learning my exercises and my singing and empowering me to manage my breathing. It has changed totally the way that I live with my lung condition. What I hope in, in the next year or so is that the, there's a sort of step up in, this, in, the, in the kind of level of evidence around this. Um, and it goes from being something quite exciting and maybe a little bit fringe to something that becomes, uh, for want of a better word, respectable in kind of, you know, within the management of people with, with lung disease. What I really hope is that there's a substantial shift in the way that we think about health, particularly in terms of chronic conditions, and that instead of thinking first medication we need to start thinking first holistic and think about the, the whole person and what happens to you when you have a chronic condition what that does to your social life what it does to your confidence what it does to your sense of the future and and start from that point if social prescribing comes in and that and that and that shift starts to happen it could make a really substantial difference to people's lives i think i mean i, I think convincing some people about singing will always be a challenge and will always be difficult but there has been a growing sort of research and body and evidence that demonstrates the efficacy and the importance of singing for lung health. There's a great opportunity for singing for breathing to be adopted as a model and people could easily be referred via a doctor's practice to workshops. There's a huge number of people who could be supported if there was the capacity as long as it keeps going, I'll still be here. <laughs> well, as long as I can anyway. <laughs> We're working on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>